Hey, we go back again with another video and yes, I know there's an international break coming up this weekend and it is, I'm absolutely sick as a chip, sick as a chip with international break, how boring, our friendlies, I don't even know why we need them but anyway, it's another subject for another day, but we'll keep the Sunderland theme going, keep a bit of interest going and I was wondering at the weekend, how come all the young new players were at Sunderland but Nazari Rushan wasn't there, now this is an this is article in the Sunderland Echo, we're going to talk about as well all the Sunderland players that are injured and how close they are to returning. Sunderland's match against Southampton when other new signings were unveiled. New Sunderland signing Nazaria Rushin wasn't at the Stadium of Light as Sunderland beat Southampton 5-0. New Sunderland signing Nazari Rushin is yet to arrive in England after his move to Wearside was announced on transfer deadline day. An agreement was reached between Sunderland and the Ukrainian club Zorara Luransk for Russian to join the Black Cats for an undisclosed fee. Now we say undisclosed fee, we're going to say, you know, about £2.5 million. The 24-year-old completed his medical in Paris after agreeing the four-year contract with the club option for a further year as he moved was as the move was finalised, subject to international clearance. Now, subject to international clearance, he was okay to go from Ukraine to France, but not to England. Hmm. Right. Rushan wasn't at the stadium like, as, as Sunderland beat Southampton 5 0, where the Black Cats' other deadline day signings were. Mason Burstow, Al Aldi Alushi, and Timothy Pembele were all unveiled to the crowd. Export have since reported Russian is still waiting for a visa and permission to enter England after a representative signed his Sunderland contract on his behalf. Hmm. The Sunderland player is expected to arrive in England this week though, with Sunderland preparing for a away match against QPR on Saturday, September 16th after the international break. Rushan has been recovering from an injury which has meant to miss three matches. He missed three matches for Zohara Lohansk before the move to Sunderland was announced, right? So he missed three matches before the move to Sunderland was announced. The forward recently said he was recapturing the better feeling every day, recapturing and feeling better every day. After the trip to QPR, Sunderland will travel to Blackburn three days later before a home game against Cardiff. And that Sunday, the Cardiff game was moved back to a Sunday at three o'clock on September 24th. Because remember, Ling, the lady, England ladies are playing Scotland ladies on the Friday two days before. So that's a sellout, almost 40,000 people at the England ladies versus Scotland ladies on the Friday night. Obviously Saturday to, to clean up and then Sunday is the Sunderland game. The match against Cardiff was pushed back 24 hours due to the England women playing at the stadium of light that week. When discussing Russian's intimate arrival at Sunderland, sporting director Christian Speakman, Nazari is a player that we've tracked for some time following a complex process that has unfolded throughout the summer. We are delighted to conclude the agreement to bring him to the club. He's dynamic and intelligent forward who likes to exploit space, time, come on. I can actually explore, ex exploit space and he has constantly impacted, he has consistently impacted a senior environment by contributing goals and assists to Lahansk. We look forward to supporting Nahazi, Narazi as he adapts his new new life and new environment at the Stadium of Light. There we have it. So there he is. So that's what's going on with Rushan. He's coming, not so, not, yeah, a couple of weeks time, hopefully we're here. Now, players that are out injured. We have Jensen Seat. The Dutch centre-half is still yet to make his Sunderland debut following an ankle injury, but was named on the bench against Coventry and played 45 minutes, didn't he? He played, he played 45 minutes in that game where, where reports from sources say that he made one or two mistakes in the first 45 minutes and it was way off the pace. So I don't know if that's a bit injustice. If you watch the game, let me know in the comments down below. But it looks like he's getting back 45 minutes played. Hopefully he'll play a full 90 minutes. Maybe he's in the next under 21 match. But we do need him just in case Ballard, you know, is not fit. Uh, then we have Eliza Mayenda. After signing for Sunderland, the French club associate, 18 year old striker Mayenda, suffered a hamstring in his first training session on Wearside. He's expected back later this month. 
Patrick Roberts. We all know he was out for about a month. The winger is expected to be available after the international break. Brilliant, Patrick Roberts, but it'd be tough putting him back in the side and dropping him after 5 0. Do you, do you drop somebody after the 5 0 win? Corey Evans, he's been out for a while now. Sunderland's captain is still recovering from an ACL injury. Yes, nasty injury. He suffered in January. Mowbray has previously said the 33 year old could return for the festive period. So he's nowhere near due back yet. And there's no rush before. Because where does he fit in? Where does Corey Evans fit in? He's a club captain. Yes, but. Dan Neal, and you got Dan Neal, and you got you got Equa playing so well. But you know we do need strength and depth, just in case one of those two do pick up a, a knock or a niggle. So we need that strength and depth. AJ Alessi, despite playing in the second leg of the playoffs against Luton, Alessi suffered a reoccurrence of his thigh injury, which kept him sidelined last season and required surgery over the summer. It's unclear when he will be able to return. Nazari Rushan. The Ukrainian forward missed three matches for Zohar Luhansk with an injury before signing for Sunderland. And like I said, he's getting better with every day. So there we have it. And Jay Mateddy. Mateddy suffered a knee injury in pre-season and expected to be sidelined to around November. Another player that could actually be, you know, knocking on the door when he gets back if, if, if everyone, well, if people have niggles and stuff. Now, Dan Ballard. Yes, Dan Ballard. So Dan Ballard, <coughs> excuse me, he did pick up an, a knock, he blocked a shot and got kicked possibly by accident on, on Saturday and he may have missed the international break somewhere. At the end of the day, I don't really mind if he misses the international break and gets back for Sunderland. Because we need Dan Ballard fit as a fiddle. We cannot, cannot afford to lose Dan Ballard. But the new players that have come in, how much were they worth? Let's have a breakdown now of what each player was worth and was brought in for. <coughs> Yes, so this was sent me by Ben Allison on Messenger and he sent me a breakdown of all the players and how much they were worth. And it's interesting to see what the players were actually worth. Now we have Nazari Rushin, 2.5, it says undisclosed fee, but it's alleged to be about 2.5 million. Jason Sleet, 2 million, 2 million. Then we have... We have the likes of Jube, Joe Bellingham, 1.3, 1.75 million. Now, I thought it was more than that. Let me know in the comments down below if you know anything more. Joe Bellingham, 1.75. Now, is that, that, that must have add-ons as well. Surely, Joe Bellingham, that seems like a snip for 1.75. Eliza Menyende, 800,000. <laughs> so say 800 million there. 800,000. Nictorious Triantos, is that all? 350k. 350k for Nictorious. Then we have Adele Alouche, undisclosed fee. Nathan Bishop, undisclosed fee. Dak was free and Semedo was free. Of course, we're yet with Mason Bestor is on loan. So there's the breakdown of the players that we haven't really spent a great deal. So is that really a good bit of business by Speakman in the, in, in the January window? Now, I'm going, to make, I'm going to show you a comment now for somebody called David Cockney Mackham. Standout comment for me. Loads of good comments on the channel yesterday for the mad, mad video. But this one, this one's actually a different side of it. I mean, I'm, I'm one night who really wants a mad to come back. I really want to get them in the team. But he's an interesting one. Don't get me wrong, I loved Ahmad last season, but I hope we don't need him in January because it means our players, Hamia, Bar, Rushin, Dak, Alushi, Mayende will be firing in the goals. And don't forget, yeah, and, and if we bring Ahmad back, it will mean less chance to develop our players. And with a mad being unknown. A mad, I think, will also be away in, in January for the African Cup of Nations. And he could go on to February for that African Cup of Nations. So thank you, David Cockney Mackham. Very interesting that, yes, if we want to really bet our players in and grow them and get them the experience. But still, I love a mad, how mad would be great. But I do get that comment. And there was loads of good comments down below in, in, in the comment section. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If I get any more news from me source on Danny Ballard, I'll bring it to you before I upload this video or at the end of this video or whatever it is. And I'll let you know. I'll, I'll just stick it in. I'll, I'll stick the comments in or whatever it is. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for smashing the subscribe button over the last few days. Absolutely amazing. Much appreciated. It's absolutely boiling out there. I did 5K in that heat. I put my shorts on for the first time this year. <laughs> but anyway, take care. God bless me. God go with you. We'll see you next time on The Mad Mistake. Enjoy.
I'm going to go now and enjoy my tea. What am I going to have? Oh yeah, I'm going to have sausages, jack of potato, beans. Mmm, yummy.